Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop wedding video we're going to be looking at how to do some hair masking. Now the problem with hair, this is something which you're going to be getting a lot in wedding style photographs, is that you tend to have all this little wispy stuff going on out here. Now there's no real perfect way to carefully mask around all of this stuff. I mean, if you wanted it perfect, the only thing you can really do is to come in real tight and right down at the pixel level and try to carefully come in here with a mask and you know just be real picky about it. You can do that, but we don't want to be spending that kind of time on a project. We want to get it as, you know, as good as we can in a reasonable amount of time. No picture is going to be able to be perfectly masked and you will lose a little bit of the wispy hair, but you want to keep as much of that as possible. You also don't want to be coming in here and having to do a real careful selection around all of these little bits. It, you, know, you can do it, it's just going to take you a long time. Same thing on the guys here over here. There's this little stuff in here. You could come in using, for instance, one of the lasso tools and try to carefully you know, pick in here and get all of that but it's a real pain to do that. Luckily, there is a tool that Photoshop has to solve some of these problems. It, again, it's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than trying to do it without this special tool. The first thing you want to do is to grab one of your lasso tools over here. I normally use the polygonal lasso tool. I'll use, just use the plain lasso tool for this demonstration just because it's a bit faster. And I'm going to come in and do a fairly good selection. You know, so I'm not coming in and trying to be right on the image. And I'll just kind of come around the bottom down here like that. And I'm getting in close to the hair, but not, not right on it. I'm not trying to make this a perfect selection. I just want to get in as close as I can, reasonably speaking and you'll see why in just a second just kind of coming around these I'm leaving a little bit of a, a border around that hair now that's a basic selection I could have taken more time of course and come in here a lot tighter and tried to actually select all those edges It'd be a tighter selection but luckily again we have the tool it's right here called refine edge you find it up here you'll also find it under the select menu refine edge right there same thing click on that brings up the refine edge to them. Let's go over here to overlay. Let's have different ways of looking at this. Here's the marching ants technique. That's what we just did with our selection. Here's an overlay technique. There it is on black. Here it is on white. Black and white layers. Reveal layer. So different ways of working. I think this is an easy one to use. It's the overlay look in here. When you're here you can zoom in or you can move your image around with the zoom tool. So you have some options. You can show a radius or not. Do you want to show the original? There's our original showing. And then there are a couple of different ways of working with this. Also, notice I have a, you can see it right there. I have a little brush tool. I can change the size of my brush tool right over here. And I can change the way this works. I can use this to add in or I can use this to subtract from. So we can add or subtract on our mask. Now, there are three sections as you can see here. The top section, edge detection. Second one, adjust edge. And the bottom one is output. The top one here, this is kind of the automatic. You can try this first, click on smart radius, and then pull this in a little bit and see what it does. You can see here it's kind of coming in a bit on this and it's trying to find that edge. I found this really is, for me, not that good. 
Yeah, I, I rarely use the edge detection. Sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't. The better way is to manually paintbrush in here and then use the adjust edge options. Notice if I, if I work with this, I can feather the edge, I can increase the contrast of my edge, I can shift the edge you know, in or out by a little bit. I'll leave all these at the zeroed settings for right now. So what you do with this is you find a good brush size. There's our brush size. And I'm going to, you can kind of, kind of see that, that plus in the middle. I'm going to get the plus out in the area I want to include in the mask. In other words, I want to be outside of the hair with that X. But have my circle go over the actual hair. So I'm just kind of overlapping the hair and keeping that X outside of my hair area as much as possible. You don't have to be exactly perfect on that, but reasonably so. So you want to have the X outside the hair and the circle overlapping into the hair. And you can see what it does is it tries to find that area for you. Now again, it's not perfect. It's not going to do an exactly perfect job. But it does a pretty good job of doing this. Now if it can't find the exact edge, it's going to try to give you a soft edge in there. It's going to give you a gradient. So you can see it, it's actually doing a pretty good job over here on some of this stuff. Did a real nice job up through here. Did a great job up around here. Maybe a little, a little iffy right down in there. But real nice job of coming in and actually getting in all those little bits. And this is the way you, you come in and you adjust or make a mask of this kind of hair. Is you use this tool. Once you have that basic setting done, you can then do such things as shift the edge either out or in to try to clean up the mask this way. I'll put that back to the zero setting again. You can increase the contrast. This sometimes helps clean out little bits of, of that of the problem like that. You can soften it down if you want to. Just a little bit of feathering can soften that edge down, which is usually an improvement. Or you can smooth. Notice that smoothing really softens it out. So you know, be careful with that. I find that a little bit of feathering is better than a little bit of smoothing. So there you go. That's how you can come in and actually clean that up. Now, as you can see here, it's not perfect. Once you're done, you can output this to different options. A selection, a layer mask, a new layer, a new layer with layer mask, a new document even, and a new document with a layer mask. Let's take this out to a new layer with layer mask. It's going to cut off the image right here. As you can see that. So, new layer with layer mask. Choose OK. There's our new layer. There's the layer mask. Now that we have that, I can come in and do a little more cleanup on this. Where the layer mask works is anything that's black is hidden. Anything that's white is showing. So I can paint into here on the layer mask. Just click over there. With my paintbrush, black to hide, white to show, and clean up the edges of that selection. So let's just zoom in a bit over here. And a little bit of the stuff here. This is just little wispy things. Now they're so faint, we could probably just get rid of that. It's not really going to impact our selection. So I'll grab our paintbrush. Black is going to hide. And I'll just paint some of that stuff out just like that. Scroll up here. And there's a real thin bit of hair coming around there. And the refined edge had a hard time figuring that out. So I'm just going to paint that up. But I'll leave a little bit of that one stray hair in there. And I can thin out some of the areas around this. There we go. That all looks good. Real nice here. There's a little bit of something right there. I can just clean that out. Again, I'm painting black onto here in the black hides. And this all looks pretty good, but you can you know, just kind of fine tune the edge if you want to. You don't have to, but you can. Let me show you about the hiding and showing right down here. 
there's where her shoulder is coming out across here. If I paint this in white, the shoulder is going to appear. So let's reverse our colors, paint it in white, and you can see there's the shoulder right there. So I can actually bring the rest of her. Actually, looks like that's you know part of the veil right there. So I can bring that back by painting white into the selection. Notice the outline we're on our selection right now. So white is going to show and black is going to hide. Let's go over here to black, reverse our colors, go to black. And then if I come in here along this with the black, I'm now hiding that edge. And the nice thing about doing this and using it as a layer selection and then a layer mask like that is that it allows me to go back and forth and fine tune that selection based upon that layer mask. But there you go, you see it did a much nicer job in here creating that selection, giving us you know, that nice careful edge much better than if we had tried to go in and just really carefully do all that. We could have done it, but it would have just taken forever. And when we zoom out on this, like to fit on screen, you know, of course at, at this point she's so small inside of the image that it's going to look perfect. Now the reason, you know, why would you want to do these kinds of things? Here's where it's our picture back here. Let's say I wanted to come in and do some color change or color shift on her head in here. I could now do that on this section and it would do a real nice clean job. Or if I wanted to work on the background in there, I now have her selector so I could do a real clean job on that background without you know, having any problems with the selection around her hair. Now this kind of selection using this tool the refine edge, let me see it right here again, they refine, it's saying mask now because I'm on the mask, same thing, it'll say refine edge if you're on a selection, refine selection, refine mask if you're on a mask, it's the exact same tool, let me just demonstrate that, there it is, refine mask. Now this works with any edge, you can set on any one of these edges, most of these edges will have no problem making a selection, but you can still use it if you want to. It works great on things like hair, any kind of a, a rough edge, that might just be time consuming to try to carefully mask. You can use this technique to come in and, and carefully mask that area. For instance, let's say I wanted to darken the background down here. And again, we're, we're cutting this picture off right here, so it's going to be darkened down all this stuff. You can see how this works. If I go in here on this layer, image adjustments, I just go to levels. And then if we adjust our levels a bit, you can see there, I can make the background richer and darker without damaging any of her hair right around that edge. So it gives me, again, by being able to separate her out from the background this way, using this careful selection that we did with that refined mask or refined edge, makes it real easy to do this kind of fancy photo manipulation. So there you go. That is the technique to doing these difficult edge selections like hair, you know, here or his little bit of hair right there. First step, just quick review, first step, do a tight selection, but not a perfect selection. You just have a little bit of space using any of your lasso tools. Go to the refine edge option. Use the refine edge to clean up or find that edge and save it as a new layer with masks. Probably the best way to do that. There we go. That's how to come in here and mask around difficult areas like the hair. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.